But when you raise someone from the dead, that certainly is going to spread. Word is going to spread around that this guy is, is, is for real. And, and so we have in this great this act where Jesus calls out Lazarus from the dead, from the clutches of death. He was already in the tomb and had died for three days. And Jesus calls him out of that. And I think I wanted to um, reflect a little bit on maybe something that, that is kind of a metaphor for Lazarus and Jesus' ability uh, to, to call back something from the dead that, that, that was, um, had, had already passed. I want to uh, begin, though, by sharing a little bit about seminary. The, uh, I went through and, and, and looked at some of the, the different things, went back and calculated uh, some of the stuff that I did for the seminary. And it looks like, I think that I, I estimate that I read around, well, I was in the seminary for six years, and that I read around 300 books um, and over those six years. We would literally... Uh, it was kind of like a doctoral program. It was like, hi, here's, welcome to class. Here's the five books we're going to read for this class this semester. So I read about 300 books on the priesthood or things to deal with the priesthood. I went on 12 retreats about the priesthood uh, throughout my time in seminary. 12 retreats, multi-day retreats. Went, on, went through 72 hours of spiritual direction, one-on-one -on -one with another priest about the priesthood and about my discernment and about my growth and so on and so forth. I went through 12 hours of counseling from a psych, different psychologists and psychiatrists poking and prodding, trying to make sure uh, that I wasn't crazy. Somehow I slipped through the cracks. Um, we had, I had in those six years 3,360 hours of class. Um, about the priesthood and about the different things that are involved in the priesthood. And we also had lots of workshop days on things like finances, interpersonal communication, family of origin issues, knowing yourself, how to be a leader, how to organize, so on and so forth, how to hire, how to fire, all of those things. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty amazing, you know, when you think about all of that. And it, it, it's thanks to the, the sacrifices of the people throughout the archdiocese that were able to do that. It cost probably about a quarter of a million dollars per priest uh, when you look at the education that is done over the course of their seminary time. And so thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to do that. I think the people that are probably, I want to shift gears at thinking about that for a moment, I think the people that are most aware of the importance of the sacrament of marriage are priests. Like when I get, when I get together with other priests, it invariably comes up. Concern about the state of marriage. Concern about the marriages within the parish. Concern about the state of marriage in the larger society. Uh, it's very interesting. It's priests who disagree on basically everything else. Um, you know, uh, will all agree and will share a, a great concern for marriage, and also will share a great joy that that the marriages uh, that marriage, the sacrament of marriage, brings to them. I think when you're not in something, you appreciate it more, and so priests, I think, have a great appreciation uh, for the sacrament of marriage. And now, so what I want to do, though, keeping that in mind, is I want to look at the average marriage preparation that is done compared to the average preparation that a priest goes through. So as where I read 300 books about how to become a priest, the average married couple probably doesn't read any, maybe one. Whereas I went on 12 retreats to become a priest, the average married couple maybe goes on one. Whereas I had 72 hours of one-on-one -on -one time with a priest about my growth and my discernment, the average marriage goes through about three hours with a priest. And I know some priests where they meet with you one time to fill out the paperwork, and then they meet with you one time before the rehearsal, just because of being overworked. Whereas I had 12 hours of counseling and poking and prodding from a psychologist and psychiatrist, the average married couple doesn't have any of that. Whereas I went through 3,360 hours of class to become a priest, the average married couple goes through zero hours of class. Whereas I had workshops on finances and interpersonal communication and family of origin issues and knowing myself and leadership and organization, the average married couple has zero. 
I've had over my five years now of priesthood, I've, had, I've spent $5,000 on five weeks of continuing education, one each year of my priesthood, and we do that for the rest of our life. We continue to have to, we're required to continue to take our spiritual retreat by canon law, and we're also continued every year, we're asked to do a continuing education course of some kind as well. The reason I bring all that up is because it's no wonder, I think, that marriage is struggling that married couples in this, this day and age are struggling. Priests are struggling, and look at all the preparation that the average priest gets. When you hold that up against the average preparation that a married couple goes through, it's, it's like, well, it's pretty amazing that, that the divorce rate is what it is. Now, not that, of course, you don't learn how to get married by reading a book. I'm not saying that. You don't learn how to get married, and you don't learn how to be married through a retreat or so on and so forth, but those things certainly help. And those things, I think, are key. And, and then, so a lot of people will say, well, we didn't have any of that, but we're, we're surviving. And that's great. And that is, that's, it's amazing to see the fight that a lot of married couples, I mean that fight in a good way, the fight that married couples have to, to work things out and the drive that they have. But I think, I wonder sometimes, you know, what, what are we doing for our married couples? What spiritual nourishment? What are we providing for them, both before marriage and also after marriage? You know, we see what happens with, with marriage, and, 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 and I've, I've just decided I think it's time to do something. You know, I think it's time, and I think a lot of other priests have recognized that it's time too and have been doing things, and I know a lot of priests that do a lot of good things. And I think the reason I bring that up, first of all, before I kind of talk about what I'm hoping to, to do, I think it's very, very relevant to the gospel today because Jesus calls out Lazarus from the dead and he brings it back from the dead. And I think in a very real way, there are marriages all the time that, that are dead, that are essentially the people have given up, have decided that, well, you know, maybe we'll walk away or maybe we'll just coexist, but we won't really love one another. We won't really exist in a marriage. We'll just not go through the pain or the, the paperwork. Of, of splitting up. Jesus calls out to that. And just like he calls out to Lazarus, he calls out to those marriages and he can bring them back from the dead. Literally, he can grasp them from the jaws of death and bring it back. And I know because I've seen it. When I was first figuring out the rosary and I was kind of like, boy, I don't know, maybe we are worshiping Mary here. I was like in this whole discovery of my Catholicism phase. And so I had this, this urge, it was like, test me. I'm like, okay. So I did. And I had, there were five marriages that I knew of from friends and family, uh, an aunt and uncle and some other friends and their parents um, who I was very close to who were all on the mat, so to speak. I mean, it was, it had flatlined. And all of my friends and my family had come, you know, and they were like, hey, um, you know, I think it's pretty much done, but if you could say a prayer, that'd be really awesome. I'd appreciate it. And so I did, and I offered those. I prayed a rosary every day on the way to Chattard High School uh, for those five marriages. And all five of them came back from the dead. And I think it was God, first of all, saying to me, trust me, I want to, my mom hears my prayers. Uh, you can go ahead and, and pray to, you can, you, a rosary is not going to, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. But it was also a really powerful moment for me to recognize that God wants to pour out his Holy Spirit on marriages. He wants to do that. He wants to call them back. And he wants to help them. He wants to uh, nurture them. But a lot of times, again, we, have, we don't have the tools. We've never been given the tools uh, to, to, to exist and to flourish. Even if you are, even if things are okay. You know, if people say, well, how, how's your relationship with God? I'm like, well, it's okay, but it... I know I need to, there's more to, I need, I'm called to more. I'm not answering the, the bell as much as I should. I should be doing, I'm, I'm called to more with God. It's not just enough to just exist with God. And I think in the same way it, it is with marriage. And so we, what I want to say is just first of all, um, we've been trained as priests to meet with couples. Uh, nothing long term. Uh, but short term, we have been trained to kind of help at least kind of assess the situation, kind of give some simple things for people to work on uh, where they're struggling. 
But also, um, what I went ahead, there was a great uh, a friend of mine, really, who's a uh, counselor, marriage counselor and family counselor in Indianapolis, and a Catholic. And uh, I would recommend couples that were struggling or teenagers, anybody that was having an issue um, that I knew of, I would send them to him. And I thought, you know, boy, there's nothing really, there isn't a Catholic mental health person really in, in the Terre Haute area. So I decided, I'm bringing him here. And so um, we're going to have a Saturday in May, May 10th, um, where there's going to be an opportunity in the morning to just hear some presentations from him. It'll be your chance to catch up to my 3,360 hours of class, um, or my 300 books, or whatever it might be, or whatever. No, I, I'm joking, of course, but it, he will provide just some simple tools, some basic some, some things to start, and, and so even no matter where your marriage is at, if, if you're older, if you're just getting, if you've just been married, if things are going well, if things aren't going as well, no matter where you're at, you're going to hear something that's going to help your marriage by coming to this on May 10th. Uh, his name is Dr. Goudan, and there will be more, I'll, you know, I'll have a flyer together and all that stuff in the bulletin um, as we get closer, but I just wanted to kind of throw this out there as a save the date type of thing because I think marriage is something that we need to be we do we need to be more proactive we need to be out for marriages and trying to provide them with the resources that they need so that Christ can come in and call them back from the dead or if they're already alive to help them flourish even more so know as married couples that I am praying for you all the time that I take uh, your marriages I'm very uh, I look to them and I know a lot of people look to them, even if they don't say it. They're looking to you for strength, and our world is looking to you and your marriage. And we need stronger, and we need healthier marriages. And so I pray that you might either take up the invitation to come and chat with me, or read a book, or do something to help improve that. Uh, give yourself some more tools, you and your spouse. And then again, hopefully we will then, through that, Christ will be able to work more fully and to help call back those marriages from the dead that are struggling, and to make those that are doing okay to bring them to a fuller life.